You'll often notice that whenever you turn on the news, they will talk about various trends in the economy. One such trend in particular is the unemployment rate. Low unemployment is generally seen as a good thing because that way more people are working jobs so they can buy the necessities that they need to get by. One thing you'll never hear anybody on the news ask about, discuss, or advocate is 100% employment. Why is it that we can never seem to drive the unemployment rate down to zero? Why is it that even in social democratic countries that liberals love to put on a pedestal as the ideal model for civilization, that there always seems to be at least some percentage of people who slip through the cracks and can't get a job? Is it because they're lazy and unmotivated? <laughs> well, if that's the case, then there sure were a lot of lazy and unmotivated people during the financial crisis of 2008 when the United States reached a true unemployment rate of up to 17%. Let's reel things back here a bit. Why can't we ever reach 100% employment in a market economy like we could in a planned economy? Why is it that there always seems to be this ebb and flow where there are periods of high unemployment and periods of low unemployment? And the answer is this. In a market economy, whether we are in a boom or a bust, some unemployment is actually a good thing. And here are the reasons. The unemployed are a reserve army of labor. They are people who are able to work but can't find work because businesses aren't looking to hire. Companies are incentivized in the market to pay as little for labor as they can get away with while trying to drive their workers to be as productive as possible. If you have a situation where jobs are scarce, it creates a pressure that pits workers against one another to compete for inferior wages and benefits. After all, if you're broken unemployed, you'll be more than happy to prove your subservience and usefulness to the employer, regardless of what the wages and benefits might be, since you don't have a job and your survival is contingent on it. Because of this, you may find yourself doing something that is very exploitative of you. But this remains an afterthought. You're just happy that you get to eat tonight. It is this desperation for work that not only puts people in a position where they are far more compliant to their own exploitation, but also transforms the workers into little more than disposable tools. If one worker isn't doing his job as well as you like, or he's not kissing up enough, fire him! After all, there's more disposable people who are willing to do more for less where he came from. Companies benefit from their workers being disposable assets for this very reason. They hold the jobs, and by extension, our livelihoods at ransom. And if we don't kowtow hard enough, or slave away to enrich them hard enough, then there's the door. At the same time, with respect to the general trend of companies to want to pay as little for labor as possible, not only do they do this tactic to depress wages and benefits, they are also driven to do it naturally. For to hire more people is going to increase labor costs. Even if having extra people doing the same job means maximizing output, it isn't, if it isn't cost effective to hire another person, then it's not going to be done. This general trend in business, coupled with the social stigma of being unemployed and unreliant on the market for subsistence, is what allows for companies to raise the levels of exploitation so that they can maximize profits. If all of this seems like mere conjecture to you, like I am merely making these things up out of thin air, then I must ask you, viewer, why is it that Americans haven't seen a meaningful wage increase in the last 40 years in spite of productivity being at an all-time high? Why is it that corporations have been outsourcing their manufacturing, customer service, and agriculture to the third world, where people are paid pennies an hour to do the same work Americans would otherwise be doing for dollars an hour? Why is it whenever a large company fires a bunch of people their stocks go up. The truth is that you will never see 100% employment in capitalism because it would be bad for growth. It means the workers aren't made disposable, that people would be less likely to settle for less since there is more work available, and in the grand scheme of things, it would cut into profits, and no company on earth wants anything of the sort. Meanwhile, those at the top of the social pyramid push a narrative through mainstream media that these people who aren't working are just lazy, inferior freeloaders, when they are the ones who refuse to hire more people in the first place. It's not true that some people are just lazy. Many are just made that way, or made complacent because they don't feel that they belong anywhere, and have just given up. 
in the grand scheme of things, people want to work. People want to be productive and do things that make them feel like they belong and that they're contributing something bigger to them themselves. It's just that in a society where your labor is alienable like any other commodity, you are only going to be valued for your ability to enrich your employer. This phenomenon is a trait unique only to the market economy. In a planned economy, and even socioeconomic modes of the past, such as feudalism, early agrarian, and even hunter-gatherer societies, everyone was guaranteed work. There has always been something to do, and there will always be work that needs to be done. This is a condition that is pandemic to capitalism since it is a byproduct of the profit motive. In other words, after a certain point, unemployment is an inevitable externality.